we'll get started now. I'm going to introduce our first speaker, and this is uh, Dr. Dustin Sulak. Wow, thanks for such a warm reception. Thank you all for coming out. It's, it's great to see such a turnout and to have uh, some familiar and a lot of new faces here tonight. I hope that we're able to help um, get some good information into your hands and answer your questions. And um, if anything, uh, help you live your life more to the fullest and enjoy your time here. Um, let's go back one slide, please. Okay, so that's... So, uh, yeah, so what I want to talk about tonight is the potential benefits of medical marijuana. Um, I understand that marijuana is not the best medicine for everyone in the world, uh, but it is very useful for quite a large number of folks with different conditions. And so I want to talk about that. Next slide. If, um, if we look at just a partial list of health conditions that uh, marijuana or cannabinoids, the compounds that are active in marijuana, can treat, it's really quite a daunting list, and, uh, and everything on here has at least some animal research that suggests that marijuana would be effective, and some of these conditions have some human research. Um, I'm not going to uh, read through it, but it, as you can tell, there's um, neurological disorders, there's psychological disorders, there's infectious diseases, um, uh, gastrointestinal diseases, some of these more like, uh, chronic uh, hard to put your finger on conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome, um, fibromyalgia. There's, there's such a wide variety of conditions that medical marijuana can help. And anyone who's a scientist or in the medical field has to kind of scratch their head when they see this with some um, disbelief or at least some caution and really, you know, how is it possible that one herb can treat so many different things? If we go to the next slide. Um, these are the uh, uh, conditions that are approved in Maine for, uh, for patients to qualify for medical marijuana certificates. Cancer, ALS, which is Lou Gehrig's disease, glaucoma, Crohn's disease, which is an inflammatory bowel disorder, HIV, hepatitis C, agitation of Alzheimer's disease, cachexia, which is wasting syndrome, severe nausea, seizures, severe and persistent muscle spasms, such as those found in MS, but also found in other conditions like spinal cord injury, for example, um, chronic pain, and male patella syndrome. Next slide. So, so again, the question is, how does one herb help so many different conditions? And if we go again, um, the answer is the endocannabinoid system. Before you're born, all of you inside your body are making cannabinoids which are um, chemicals that act similarly to those found in the marijuana flowers. These, um, yep, you can, you can say that. These, these cannabinoids are present all through the body, through every tissue, every major organ, all your life, and even before you're born, you're using cannabinoids to promote what's called homeostasis, which basically means balance. So the, this system, this receptor system, is an integral, basic part of your body's ability to heal itself. And you're always using this throughout all of your life. In fact, all vertebrate animals and even very simple animals have cannabinoid systems and are also using this as part of their healing system. So that's why so many different conditions respond to cannabis, because you're hardwired to respond to it. The cannabinoids found in, in the marijuana are stimulating an old, an ancient healing system that's built inside of you. Let's go to the next slide. This, that was a picture of the cannabinoid receptor, which was only discovered in the 90s. And so a lot of um, medical professionals don't have any knowledge or education on the system. The reason that it lagged behind so far in the scientific exploration is because this entire system is fat soluble. So while um, opiates were discovered, you know, early in the, in the 1900s, the first uh, the cannabinoid, which was THC, wasn't identified until the 60s. The whole science of cannabinoids has lagged behind a lot of other fields for a good 20 or 30 or, or more years. But um, now we're, we're learning that this receptor system 
is probably the most dense of all the endogenous receptor systems in the body. That means if we looked at the membranes of all the cells in your body and counted up all the, all the receptors in those membranes, there'd be more cannabinoid receptor than any other type. I mean, this is a major, profound physiologic system that's responsible for health, and life can't exist without it in humans. These receptors aren't just in the brain, they're all through the body, through all the organs, and that explains why there's such a broad range of therapeutic effects. Um, so again, the, the purpose of the cannabinoid system is to promote tissue and organ homeostasis, which is balance. It also has a neuroprotective quality, which means it protects nerve cells from injury and disease and trauma. And as part of this homeostatic mechanism, it modulates several different activities in the body. We don't say it stimulates and we don't say it suppresses because it has the ability to do both. If it's going to be a homeostatic mechanism, if it's going to stimulate balance in the body, it has to have the ability to bring something down a little bit or bring it up a little bit. And we find it doing that all over the place. Things like inflammation, immune system function, the release of neurotransmitters is controlled by cannabinoids. Uh, it controls metabolism and appetite. It affects connective tissues like muscles and fascia. And it also controls the activity of glands and organs. One thing I didn't mention up here is that it's also an antioxidant, which helps protect us from free radical damage from radiation, uh, ultraviolet radiation or other forms of radiation uh, that we're exposed to. And that's actually why the plant cannabis sativa makes these compounds. That plant doesn't have cannabinoid receptors. These cannabinoids aren't active in modulating the health of the plant. Actually, it's just the plant's producing them to help protect itself from ultraviolet radiation and from oxidative damage from pests and uh, bacteria and molds and things like that. So it also protects us in that same way. What I want to do is talk a little bit about some of the indications that are here in Maine. I'm not going to cover every one and we'll have some time for questions so if I miss something please feel free to ask. But chronic pain is the condition that I see the most uh, people for in our offices. This is the most common complaints and I think there's a lot of chronic pain all over the world. I mean, there's just a lot of suffering in the world right now. We're going through some pretty big shifts here. And, um, and Maine certainly has its fair share of it. I think that to some extent pain is needed in life to promote change. And our goal as healers and physicians and as individuals, as patients, isn't to eliminate pain from our lives, but it's to develop a relationship with pain where we can benefit from it without being limited by it. Where we can be in touch with our bodies, be in touch with our environment without having to suffer through our entire existence. What people find when they use cannabis to treat pain, first off, is that it decreases the intensity of the pain. But it doesn't take the pain away, it just decreases its intensity. It also alters the perception, and this is the thing I, I hear most common. You know, it, it just doesn't bother me as much after I use cannabis. It's still there, but I can move past it. I can think about other things. I can do other things. And it also, um, it's really important to stay in touch with your body because while it's still there, a person is less likely to go out and re-injure themselves. They know if this is okay for them to do or not because those feedback signals are still intact, unlike some other pain medications that might dumb it down or, or um, or uh, you know, just disconnect a person's mind from their body, uh, exposing them to the vulnerability of re-injury. Uh, the cannabis actually brings the mind into the body. A lot of my patients report that they're more in touch with themselves now. They realize that they're tight or that they're off balance or off kilter, that something's wrong and they need to change. So um, marijuana is very helpful for treating chronic pain. Um, not only does it help with the pain itself, but it helps globally. Pain isn't just a condition, um, you know, of this sensation that's coming at you. It's, it affects sleep, depression, appetite, and, and very importantly, stress. Sorry, the cartoon, I'll read it. Um, it's a patient talking to her chiropractor. Uh, the pain starts in my husband's lower back, then it travels up his spine to his neck, then it comes out his mouth and into my ears. And, and that's why I get these headaches. So part of integrative medicine, which... Um, this medical marijuana practice falls under the umbrella of 
looks at a patient as a whole. And by looking at someone as a whole, we're talking about their mind, their body, their spirit, their community, their occupation, all aspects of this bigger organism, their family. And, and that's really important. So um, pain often causes this response where um, it's, it's being, like being in a state of fight or flight all the time. Because that's natural, that's how we evolved, that when we're in a painful situation, often it's, it's appropriate to try to get out of there or to have an emotional reaction without really thinking about why we're doing it. You know, rational thinking is better for when we're, every, everything's calm and peaceful and we're safe. But when the tiger's attacking, you know, from an evolutionary perspective, we don't want to think about it. We just want to act and get out of there. What, what cannabis does for people in chronic pain is it helps bring them back into the present moment and it helps decrease their stress level so that they don't have to act emotionally all the time because they're in this pain. Again, it helps them get past the pain so they can be more in touch with themselves as a whole and function as a better member of their community, their family, and their environment. Comparing cannabis as a treatment for pain with some of the other more common treatments, um, if we look at non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin, ibuprofen, Aleve, um, those things are widely considered to be relatively safe, but there's still thousands of death every, deaths every year from those medicines. They, they have all sorts of side effects like GI irritation and kidney issues. And, they actually don't work that well for a lot of people. Um, opiate medications, which I think are way over prescribed in Maine, these are uh, the so-called narcotics like oxycodone and hydrocodone. Those are extremely addictive and they actually don't work very well for chronic pain. They work great for acute pain, end of life pain, post-surgical pain, uh, you know, acute injuries and traumas. But once people start using opiate medications for chronic pain, they quickly develop tolerance, which leads to addiction, and the efficacy goes away, and there's a whole slew of other side effects. I routinely find that when somebody comes to me that's using opiate medications and not using marijuana, once they start using marijuana on a regular basis, their dosage instantly decreases by 50%, often more in the first couple days after starting cannabis. So that 80 milligrams of oxycodone a day is all of a sudden 30 or 20. And the other thing it does, and this is all proven scientifically, I have references for all the material up here. If anyone wants that, we can send them out on email. Um, and you can check out my other presentations online. But the other thing that happens with opiates in people that don't use marijuana is every so often they need to increase their dose because it stops working. People that use marijuana and opiates together are able to maintain the same low dosage for years or decades. And I've seen this clinically. Next slide. Um, cancer, I'd like to talk about. Here's a, here's a picture of some, um, you know, this is artificially colored, but these are cancer cells and this is a healthy cell. It's pretty well known that um, cannabis can help treat the symptoms associated with cancer and the symptoms associated with cancer treatments. And those are some of the other things we're going to be talking about today. Pain, nausea, diarrhea, neuropathy. Um, you know, we find that people going through radiation and chemotherapy and even just from the tumors or cancers themselves, uh, these are some of the effects and marijuana can help ameliorate or relieve those effects. But um, what's really exciting is that the cannabinoids have been shown to have very strong anti-cancer properties of their own. So now we're not just talking about treating symptoms, we're actually talking about killing cancers with four distinct mechanisms of action that have been proven in laboratories that the, um, the cannabinoids will specifically target cancer cells while leaving healthy cells alone. It inhibits the growth of the, of the tumor. Uh, the cannabinoids inhibit formation of blood vessels to the tumor, which is a very important part of tumor growth. The, these cancer cells are usually very effective at getting new blood vessels to grow toward them so that they can keep growing larger and maintain more nutrition. Cannabis stops that. It prevents their migration around the body and, uh, and the metastasis. So it's really uh, affecting cancers at many different levels. And if we look at the next slide, these are all the different types of cancers that have been shown in laboratory and clinical studies to be decreased or killed by cannabinoids. I mean, it's, it's really quite impressive. And this research is blossoming. I think the pharmaceutical cancer industry is really looking at cannabinoid medicines and altering them to create the next generation of chemotherapy agents.